Still, long before Newton, Galileo Galilei described projector motion perfectly. He realized bodies can fall vertically and move horizontally at the same time. From Galileo's point of view, which took in everything from the heavens to the heavenly gardens of the Renaissance, a body's motion has two components, completely independent of each other. Galileo's extraordinary vision is explained by Isaac Newton's extraordinary equation. The vertical component of the vector force is mg downward or minus mg. No force at all acts in the horizontal direction. Only the vertical component of acceleration is minus g. In the horizontal direction, where there is no force, the acceleration is zero. Acceleration is the rate of change of speed. Since the horizontal speed is not changing, it must be constant. Constant speed in the horizontal direction and constant acceleration downward, both acting independently and simultaneously. These are the elements of Galileo's trajectories. And they're also the results of Newton's equation. Force equals mass times acceleration. F equals ma. But to understand the ongoing significance of F equals ma, it's necessary to return to a time before scholars had its help in grappling with worldly phenomena. In ancient Greece, scholars believed that everything in nature came to rest, that coming to rest was the nature of all moving things. According to the Aristotelians, all moving objects were propelled by a mover. When the mover couldn't be seen, as in the case of projectile motion, Aristotle said that air itself was responsible for the movement. Much later, even though Europe in the Middle Ages retained the Aristotelian worldview, that explanation wasn't entirely satisfactory. To explain the unescorted motion of projectiles, such as spears, arrows, and cannonballs, scholars came up with the idea of impetus. Launching a projectile imbued it with a finite amount of impetus, which gave the object its motion. When its impetus was consumed, the object suddenly dropped.